Welcome back. Today in this video, we're going to talk about the Bass Elites in Palatka. We're going to go over the current AOI standings for Bassmaster Elites Angler of the Year. We'll also talk about the Invitational Tournament 2 for a little bit. First and foremost, the Bassmaster Elites on Palatka was amazing. All different types of styles of fishing were done. Some people using technology, some not using technology. You got to see on the first day, Trey McKenna using technology to another level that was, in my mind, I'd never seen anyone use it the way he was using it. He was able to see when the fish were coming up and knew was calling his shots, like Babe Ruth pointing to anywhere he was going to hit the home run. He was calling his shots when those fish would start to rise and go after shad on the top of the water. Now, if you missed the video before on one of the videos up there, I talked about how that shad bite was going to be early in the morning. But Trey was on fire on day one, and it was really fun to watch how he was using technology to help him catch fish, and he had a great first day. Day two started, and it became more of a sight fishing game. Also, Trey had a 90-minute penalty. He had ran through a no-posted, no motor zone that bass had created i think and he ran through that no motor zone and he got a 90 minute penalty which really changed his trajectory of how he was going to fish because he needed to get to his spot early in the morning to catch those fish before boats were running through and stuff like that and it changed everything for trey he went from being in that top five or whatever it was in the first day to just moving back and still making the cut and making money and trey is really an exceptional fisherman but that penalty really did hurt. That was also the day we started to see guys sight fishing, bed fish. Now these were post spawn fish. I think actually most of the fish were there to guard fry or else they were there to eat as many little bluegill that were probably spawning in the same area too. It really was fun to watch Corey Johnston and a lot of anglers in one spot just fishing beds. Now there's a big controversy with technology and also if we should be fishing bed fishing. I've seen it on other podcasts and videos and other stuff. We need to make it very clear. The fish they were catching were post-spawn. They weren't bedding fish. They were on beds, but they weren't spawning. That's the better way to put it. And the fish they caught were just big fish. It was unreal to watch day two. But like I said, Corey Johnston was fishing shallow, sight fishing, and I think he caught about 27 pounds. And it was a flat-out master class on how to sight fish. It was exceptional if you were a fan of bass fishing and watching and just being an ultimate fan. What Corey did this whole weekend was phenomenal. Day three, Corey and a bunch of anglers were back to the exact spot they had fished in day two. And they wore them out. They almost took probably all the fish that were on that, that area or a majority of them. Maybe some of the, the bucks or the males didn't get caught, but there were a lot of big, bigger fish that were being caught. And my surprise on day three was just how exceptional Brad Watley fished. And he wasn't fishing the same way that everyone else was fishing. He had a spot that was continuously reloading fish. And Brad went from eight pounds or a little over eight pounds on day one to after day two, he had 30 plus pounds of fish and it jumped him up. And day three, he continued to catch big fish after big fish and put him in contention of Corey, even though Corey had a giant lead after day three and even got some help from his brother, which was maybe a little controversial. And if you didn't if you didn't see it, at one point in time, Corey and his brother Chris were talking about how Corey had two one-pounders in, in his live well. He had three big fish and two one-pounders and he needed one more fish to get him over that hump. And Chris had seen a fish or spooked a fish and said, there's one heading your way. Big five or six pounder ended up being a seven pounder. And he got that help from his brother. He said, hey, this is where it was, blah, blah, blah. And he ended up catching the fish. And a little bit controversial because I don't know, I don't know the rules on how you're allowed to help an angler or not help an angler. And obviously it was okay because nothing, there was no points or nothing was said or done. And it was just a little odd. It's the first time you could, it's the first time I've ever seen something like that happen. And it happened because the, they were brothers. I mean, these are two brothers that do everything together and they're competitive with each other and they want to see each other succeed. So while it was controversial a little bit, I kind of have a little bit of respect for it because I thought it was, thought it was really awesome that his brother would do something like that for him. And of course, day four came around and we got to see Corey Johnson hold up his first tournament win, that blue trophy that he's been striving for. And it was, it was just awesome. Corey and the guys, Corey and Chris and all those guys were just fishing all sorts of ways. They were pitching, they were flipping in uh, lily pads, they were sight fishing, they were bed fishing, and they were using their electronics as much as possible. It was a, a, just a gamut of great fishing from day one to day four. And while I really liked 
Dale Hollow the week before because of all the small mouth and the stuff like that. I'm gonna be completely honest. I think this Palatka tournament was the best tournament I've ever watched from top to bottom. I don't know why. I don't know why I feel like it was just incredible to watch. And I'm not, I don't have, I really don't play favorites to major league fishing over bass. I just enjoy, I would enjoy watching fishing. This was the first time I got to watch fishing and really watch, watch what they were doing. And Bass put on a great event. And the top 10 anglers who finished in Palatka were Brad Watley was in second, Jacob Fouts. And let's just say, we should give some, some credit to Jacob Fouts. After the stuff that happened in the off season, in his YouTube channel and all that stuff, he was catching some grief over a lot of stuff. But it's nice to see that he was able to get that third place finish. And I hope he continues to to move forward. Drew Benton was fourth, Chris Johnston was fifth. After that, you had Greg Hackney, Christy, Hanselman, Airy, and Latuso. And I had to look at that twice to make sure I pronounced it right. If I mispronounced anybody, I apologize. But those are your top 10 finishes at Palaka. In Angular of the Year points, Trey McKinney is still leading. Jordan Lee is now in second. Chris Johnston, Tyler Williams, Corey Johnston, Stetson Blaylock, Jacob Fouts, Justin Hamner, Cody Hoof, and Kyle Norstetter is in that top 10. Some of the guys that are confusing. Milliken had a bad tournament over in the Harris Chain behind us and actually improved in this tournament. So Milliken is standing in 20th. The ones that are a little weird, Scott Martin's in 75th, Ike and Ellie's in 84th, Rick Clun is in 92nd, Gerald Swindle is 96th, John Cruz which just really surprised me because he is so good on Palaka, it's not even funny. He is in 99, and Matt Robertson is in the 100th place for Angler of the Year. And there's only a few more tournaments left, so some of these guys got to really make up some ground if they want to make it into the Classic because that Classic cuts at like 40. So these guys need to really hammer down and catch some fish. But there's a few guys that really, they really have to have some big points because I know that Trey is just a couple points up or maybe one point up on Jordan Lee, and they're in that 385 range, and you get down to that Cruz and Matt Robertson and they're under 100 points so to get up there they need to have some seriously consistent uh, seriously consistent run going into the off season. Next we have to have that that discussion when technology doesn't help in an anglers tournament. This was the first time where forward facing sonar and that new technology wasn't as prominent as the other ones and we saw a lot of old school anglers and I don't mean a negative by old school angler maybe I should say an angler that isn't using technology as much and I apologize because someone did mention that I don't know his name right off the top of my head but I apologize but the guys who aren't using technology really sh were shown their the way this week and while Jordan Lee still uses a lot of technology we've known in the past that he can win anywhere anytime any any place and Jordan's consistently winning these or not winning but being, being in that conversation for that angler of the year and I, if it were for me that would be my money i i think jordan lee and even though he had a horrible tournament um i think and i think patrick waddler is right up there too but he had a bad last couple tournaments and has dropped down in the points but how much has technology helped some of these anglers some of the guys obviously they can catch up having that technology and knowing that format format and being prominent in it and doing well and knowing all the ins and outs of it has helped anglers get themselves to where they are in that angler of the year points but we're still seeing some guys who aren't technology based that are still doing well and it's fun to see both sides but as we start to move up technology is going to play a big part in who is doing well and we just have to get used to it last the Invitational happened in Kentucky Lake, and I have to say, I didn't keep, I really didn't keep in, in touch with it because the elites were going on, and I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed what the elites did. I, I, I know that's hard, it's hard not to say because the elites are the elites. They're the best because there's a reason, but there's a lot of times I just don't, I'm not into it as much because of the way they're fishing. I can't say that anymore. After Palatka, I just, that was the best turn I've watched ever, I think. But the Invitationals were up there in Kentucky Lake, and the they had some really great, there were some really great anglers. Andrew Norby won it. Now, if you don't know Andrew or his YouTube channel, he does Fishing with Norby. And it is phenomenal. He doesn't get into the drama. He's very faith-oriented. And it's always, a, it's really a lot of positive. So if you haven't watched his channel, I think you should go watch it. But he won first place. Had his family out there and it was amazing for him. So congratulations to Andrew. Second place was Dakota Ebert. Third was Kobe Miller. Fourth was Alec Morrison. Brady Campbell. Jacob Walker. Kyle Hall. Kevin Manira. I know I mispronounced pronounce that one. Jaden Parrish and Drew Gill. There's a lot of great anglers fishing those invitationals and it's fun to watch. And and 
while I don't know how much coverage they get, and really if they're competing against the elites, I think the elites are going to get more people watching it. But the invitations are a great place for a lot of great anglers. I'm really surprised on the some of the angler names that are in the invitationals. I think it's I think it's as good as any other secondary tournament group that there is. And I say that not negative. I think you have BPT and you have the invitationals, of course. It's like the AAA, maybe even maybe even the same, almost the same level in some instances. And you have the elites and you have the opens. But the Invitationals didn't disappoint either. They had a great tournament and seeing Andrew win was amazing. So congratulations to Andrew. If you like these kind of videos and you want me to continue to do updates on what's going on in the fishing world, in the tournament world, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. I really do appreciate it. Remember, take a good fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you very soon. Cheers.